If your day in court ends with a smile, you're probably walking away with an acquittal. Imagine you're in a courtroom. The tension is palpable. The verdict, not guilty. That's an acquittal. In legal terms, an acquittal occurs when a judge or jury finds the defendant not guilty of the charges against them. It's not just a simple no, it's a declaration that the prosecution hasn't met its burden of proof. But wait, it gets more interesting. Did you know an acquittal doesn't always mean the defendant didn't commit the crime? It often means there just wasn't enough evidence to prove guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. This principle is a cornerstone of criminal justice, ensuring that it's better for 10 guilty persons to escape than one innocent suffer. So next time you hear someone was acquitted, you'll know it's more than just a legal victory. It's a testament to our justice system's commitment to fairness and doubt. Remember, in the eyes of the law, you're innocent until proven guilty. Am I the only one who didn't know that being anxious could also mean being super eager? Let's dive into this surprising twist of meanings. When we say someone is anxious, it often brings to mind feelings of worry or nervousness. But did you know, anxious can also mean being extremely eager or enthusiastic about something. Yes, it's true. For example, if a company is anxious to avoid any trouble, it doesn't just mean they are worried, it means they are keenly focused on preventing any mishaps. They are desirous of a smooth operation without any hitches. In contrast, the antonym of anxious in this sense would be uninterested. This means not showing any enthusiasm or eagerness towards something. So, the next time you hear someone is anxious about an event or an opportunity, double check. Are they worried or are they just super excited? It's all in the context. Why do 90% of people believe that focusing on family welfare is crucial? Because it's the bedrock of health and happiness. Welfare isn't just a fancy word, it's the heartbeat of our homes. Think about it. When our family's welfare is prioritized, everything changes. We're talking health, we're talking happiness. But ignore it, and hardship creeps in, disrupting the peace and joy we cherish. Now welfare means ensuring that everyone in the family is not just surviving, but thriving. It's about more than just being disease-free. It's about feeling joyous and content. So how do we enhance our family's welfare? Start simple, share a meal, talk about your day, listen to each other, and support one another's dreams and challenges. It's these little things that knit a stronger, happier family fabric. Remember, the welfare of your family is a powerful indicator of your overall happiness. Don't let it slip through the cracks. Because at the end of the day, if the family thrives, everything thrives. What's something people don't know about your immune system? It's not just about eating oranges and popping vitamins. Let's dive into the science of staying healthy. Your immune system is like an elite squad of defenders in your body, tirelessly working to protect you from illness. But beyond just eating well and getting enough sleep, there are other ways to boost this powerhouse. First up, laughter. Yes, laughing. Studies show that laughing decreases stress hormones and increases immune cells, helping you fight off infections. Next, staying active. Regular exercise can boost your immune system by helping immune cells regenerate faster. And let's not forget hydration. Water helps produce lymph, which carries immune cells around your body. Simple changes, right? But they make a world of difference. So, laugh a little more, move a little more, and drink plenty of water. Your body will thank you for it. Slight changes can make a big impact. Let's explore how. Imagine you're reading a book and you come across a character who has a slight headache. This doesn't just mean any headache, it's a hint. It's small, maybe even barely noticeable, but it's there. Now think about slight changes in temperature. When your weather app says a slight drop in degrees, you might not even need that extra sweater. Understanding slight differences can help you grasp nuances in language, making you a better communicator and listener. Especially as educators, catching these subtle cues in students' language can be crucial. A student saying they're slightly confused might need just a bit of your help to fully understand a concept. So next time you hear or see the word slight, pay attention. It might be small, but its impact, anything but slight. <laughs>